It wasn't too long ago that I was an Arch fanboy. If you had asked me what my all-time favorite distribution was, you would probably hear me say some variant of Arch Linux, either a Arch-based distro or Arch itself. I would have told you that the AUR was the best thing on Linux, and I would have fought for that opinion to the death. Like, I have seriously talked about this before, where I would tell you that the reason why Arch is better than every other distro is because the AUR exists. And I've even done a podcast with Tyler talking about how I truly honestly thought at the time that the AUR was basically God's gift to man. Despite the hyperbole and all of the stuff that goes along with being an Arch fanboy, I have come to Jesus a little bit about my opinions on Arch Linux. I'm not an Arch fanboy anymore. Now, some of that is because Arch did me wrong and ruined my install and all this stuff. Now, most of that, as I've discussed in previous videos, was my fault. But Arch crashed, I couldn't get it working again, and I moved to Fedora. Now I'm a Fedora fanboy. So, when it comes down to my interest in Linux distributions, I'm kind of fickle. I move from one to another. What my favorite is really depends on what I'm using at the moment. But my experience over the last four months with Fedora has made me realize something. And that is a truth that I think is going to piss a lot of people off. And that is that Arch Linux itself is overrated. It really is. And I know, like I said, I'm going to make a lot of people angry when I say that. Because I'm not saying that Arch is bad, or that you shouldn't use it, or that people who use it shouldn't be fans of it. But the people who are so into Arch Linux have a tendency to gloss over its flaws, for one thing. But also, they have a tendency to boost up the things that are supposedly better about it than everything else. So, specifically, there are two things that everyone claims are better about Arch Linux. First, it's a rolling release distribution, so you get the latest and greatest of every package. That's the first one. The second one is obviously the AUR. And the AUR, for those of you who have never used Arch Linux before, is a community repository where basically if you have an idea for a piece of software that you might need, it's probably there. It is such a large repository of stuff that you can get pretty much anything in it. And the idea behind it is still really, really good. And when I was an Arch fanboy, I would have died for the AUR. The damn thing was so good, and I would have just fought for it to the death. But now that I'm away from the AUR, and I have been now for almost four months, I have to say, I don't miss it. Like, I thought for sure, like when I switched to Fedora, as I have every time I've switched away from Arch before, I thought for sure that I would miss the AUR and that the AUR would be the reason why I'd one day scurry back to Arch Linux or an Arch-based distro and just be happy there for the rest of my Linux career. It hasn't happened in four months, and I don't think that it's going to happen now, simply because, like I said, I don't miss the AUR. And like I said before, when I say that Arch and the AUR are overrated, I'm not saying that they're bad or even that you shouldn't use them. I really am not. What I am saying is that they aren't so great that they necessarily make Arch the best Linux distro. Because that is the argument that a lot of people have. Like, AUR is on Arch, therefore Arch is the best distro. That argument doesn't really work if it's really, really easy to live without the AUR. And it is. Now, a lot of people obviously live without the AUR. And arguing that you can't live without it is kind of dumb. But a lot of people do argue that because they have the AUR, they're somehow better off than the people who don't have the AUR. And the question then becomes, are they really? And I have to say, I don't actually think so. The reason why I say that is because if you use another distro, chances are you're going to have just as wide a software selection as you would if you had Arch and AUR. Now, do you have as easy of an access to that software selection on other distros? Maybe not. So, for example, on Fedora, because I don't have the EUR, I oftentimes have to build my own packages. So, when I come across a application that's not in the Fedora repositories, I 
can usually find it and build it. Or, and this is where everything kind of becomes a little bit muddied, is that Fedora has access, as does every Linux distribution, to Flatpak and Flathub. A lot of the applications that I probably would have installed from the AUR, I either get from Flathub or I can build on my own from source. Now, like I said, that's not as easy as just downloading it from the AUR. That's true. If your argument is that you can get easier access to software on Arch, that's an argument that I could probably get behind, even though it's not 100% true all the time. But to say that Arch has access to more software because of the AUR may be technically true, but nah, I don't think it's going to be as big a gulf as it used to be. So the bottom line when it comes to Arch Linux and the AUR is that I no longer have the rose-colored glasses on. I no longer have the investment in Arch Linux that I used to have because I no longer use it. Now, one would say, one could argue, that I have an investment in Fedora, and there's a reason now why there are approximately 20 Fedora videos on my channel in the last four months. That argument is a good one. I have become a Fedora fanboy, and just like when I was with Arch, I have rose-colored glasses on when it comes to Fedora. There are obvious flaws in Fedora that I try to ignore every single day. These are big flaws. Some of them aren't necessarily things that affect me day to day, but are kind of looming in the background. And the big one is that Fedora is an experimental distro. It's meant for being an upstream experimental playground, basically, for Red Hat. And one day, Fedora is going to have a new thing come out. Maybe the SystemD guys have decided to blow it up and make something new. You know, similar to what they did from Pulse Audio to Pipewire or from Xorg to Wayland. You know, they've decided they want to do something new that's going to completely change everything. Again, Fedora is going to get that stuff first. And as we found out with Wayland and Pipewire, when that kind of stuff first comes out, eh, it's kind of bad. And that day is going to be a day of sorrow for me when it comes to Fedora's because when I get that new stuff and it doesn't work, my absolutely wonderful experience on Fedora, well, it's going to be quite upsetting, sadly, because like I said, it's going to be kind of like an end of an era. So the point I'm trying to make out of all of this is that when you argue for your favorite distro, you are biased. Everyone is. It doesn't matter how objective you think you are or can be, you hold certain biases towards the things that you use, and that bias transfers into every argument that you make. So if you are a fervent Arch Linux and AUR user, and you think those things are the gold standard, you're going to proclaim that to the world and expect everyone to believe that you think that it's true, even though it's not necessarily any truer than anything else. Or, I should say, it's not any truer than me saying Fedora is the best Linux distro because it's the most stable on my computer. You know what I mean? Just because it happens to work fantastically for me doesn't necessarily it's going to work fantastically for everyone else. It's the same thing for any distribution. Now, I've obviously talked about the whole there's no best Linux distribution out there before, but there is a good argument to be made when it comes to this type of argument that the Arch Linux users are the worst of the bunch. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a ton of Arch Linux users out there in my audience, and I expect to hear from every single one of them down in the comment sections below, and I'm assuming that at least half of them are going to hit the unsubscribe button now that they've seen this title. I'm assuming some of them probably didn't even make it this far, if they even watched the video at all. I'm assuming they probably just hit the unsubscribe button without even watching it given that the title I plan on using is going to be very inflammatory. But I think that that actually kind of proves my point, that if you say something bad about Arch Linux, you are going to be in trouble with the Arch community. Arch Linux, to a lot of people, is unassailable. And that isn't necessarily a unique quality. A lot of people say the same thing about Gen 2 and Emacs and Vim. I do Vim a lot. And people do the same thing about Ubuntu and a lot of other distros. Like, every distro has its fans, but it feels like 
the arch folks are the worst about the whole thing. They are very invested in arch being the best Linux distro and saying otherwise gets you in a little bit of trouble with them and causes them to become very defensive about it. So I think at the end of the day, it's important for everyone, no matter what distribution you use, to realize that your interest in your distribution is a good thing, but you also have to realize that everyone else has their own interests in their distro, and those might not necessarily be the most compatible things, but also the fact that everyone gets to have their own likes and dislikes when it comes to Linux and everything else, obviously, is also, at the end of the day, a very good thing, if not only for the world at large, but also for Linux. It allows us to have choices for when inevitably we need to move on to another distribution. It also allows us to have conversations with people who we might not agree with all the time simply because they used something different and have other experiences than we might have. So a little bit of a rambly video. I know, like I said, that the title that I plan on using for this is going to piss a lot of people off. I hope that people made it to the end. Uh, because it's not really as bad as the title suggests it's going to be, although it might still be just as bad. But I wanted to talk about this because I've had some experiences since I've left Arch that have not been very positive when it comes to my interactions with the Arch community. There are some people out there, not nearly everyone. I just want to, I don't want to generalize and say all the Arch Linux community is like horrible. But I have had some bad apples come into my comments basically saying, how could you betray Arch Linux like this? You know, how could you possibly think badly about Arch Linux? You know, all this stuff. And it's just, it kind of makes you realize that sometimes there are a certain segment of a, you know, por you know portion of a community, a small portion of a community that kind of really does give it a bad name. I've talked about that before as well. But it does really feel like the Arch Linux guys or at least a portion of the Arch Linux guys have created this reputation for their superiority and it kind of rubs the rest of us the wrong way. So that's it for this video. If you have comments on this, which I'm sure a lot of people do, comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter. You can bitch at me on Twitter if you want to at the Linux cast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. You guys are just, seriously, thank you for your support so much. Without you, the channel would not be where it is right now. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.